Greetings and welcome to the Institute Laboratory. Um, today, a first electronics repair video, or at least an attempt to repair. Um, what you see here is a, G, is a JVC video cassette recorder. This is my dad's VCR, and I'm going to try to repair this thing. So, um, what's going on with this? It's now dead. It doesn't do anything. And sometimes you'll see something on the display. Uh, the display is just going crazy and all. Um, but my dad has been having problems with this VCR for a while, actually. Before this, uh, whenever you, recor you, you recorded something, uh, and when that recording was done, it would just lose its time and date. So there's probably something going on somewhere in the circuit board. This is a rather strange behavior, but a lot of things can cause such a behavior. Um, what I hope is that it's a power supply problem. There's another screw somewhere, I think. Where is it? Is it this? I think. I think I just get two other screws. Oh, yes, I think that's it. Oops. So, the goal is to simply find what's going on with this. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I think there's a connector somewhere. Oh yes, I remember. There's a connector underneath. Uh, what is this? Oh, I think it's there. There's no clip. Phew. <laughs> Alright. Let's put this assembly aside and take a look inside this thing. Oh, wait a second. I'm gonna need some additional light for this. Here comes the light. Yeah, not the best light in the world, but it does the job. So, this is the board, and uh, I think we should even be able to remove this board from the case. Ah, oh, this, this is super easy. Alright, casing is off and here's the board itself. Alright, now the assembly is... I reassembled this unit and we're ready to basically measure things already. I couldn't locate any service manual for this model, unfortunately, so we're gonna have to improvise a little bit. But soon enough, I should be enough to I should be able to locate the different voltages out of the power supply. But honestly, with no service manual for this thing, it's gonna it's not gonna be easy. My clip here. And this should be good enough. So alright. I should be DC coupled because I want to see the voltage outputs. Oh yeah, it's not connected. Duh. Oh, this is something interesting. Let me show you. Look at this. This is really odd. Looks like something is kind of cycling back and forth. We are at, I think, uh... Oh! Wow, this is weird. Hear it? Now we are at 2 microseconds per division. Yeah, there's definitely, definitely something wrong with the power supply. Oh, 
it stops. Huh. This is weird. Here's another supply output. But I guess this is the unfiltered output of the power supplies. I still have a little bit of bouncing here in the... Uh, this seems to affect the switching frequency, so I'm not sure really what's going on. It may be something re related to the power supply itself, maybe the primary part of the power supply. But otherwise, this is very weird. Now, the filtered output is looking pretty good. Kind of stable. Oh, see? This is what happens. It seems that whenever the power supply stabilizes, now and see, touching, pressing the power button does, doesn't do anything. It just acts up. Oh. It seems to change. It seems to... As you can see, this uh, problem is not stable. It seems to improve with time. Like, it, it, it does seem to cycle uh, at a slower and slower rate. Maybe at some point it's going to power up. This sounds like a bad power supply. This, this sounds like a bad power supply cap, but and I'm not sure. It's a little bit better. Oh, see? Ah, now it's powered up. Alright, now you're seeing the oscilloscope itself and uh, I'm going to probe the different parts of the circuit. Now, if we look back at the two power, the three power rails, here's the first one, stable waveform, but it is, it is sim somewhat different compared to at first. Second power rail, this is probably somewhere around 12 volts, and this is one of the power rails. This is 10 volts per division, so we are at maybe 30 volts peak peak. After the diodes, we have 15 volts maybe. And then after the coil, still the same voltage. All right. Um, after a quick, res quick research and going by decreasing levels of likelihood, chances are that some capacitors are bad in the power supply. And so let's first remove the 1000 microfarads, 10 volts. Yeah, not the brand I prefer. So we're going to try and find some top quality capacitors. I have some better quality parts on this board, so we're going to dismantle, well, we're going to remove the set parts. Ha! This works so good compared to my old piece of crap soldering iron. works so good. Alright, here are my two parts. I replaced these two capacitors. These were the ones that I replaced. But I want you to look at something really interesting in here. Can you see the difference in color? The bigger one is discolored. So I guess this capacitor uh, has heated to an extent. And I wouldn't be surprised if the ESR of this capacitor was outside specs. So I replaced it. I also replaced another capacitor next to it just as a preventive measure. With two capacitors 
capacitors that are much bigger, as you can see, they're proper size. And <laughs> interestingly, as you can see, the legs on these capacitors have been spaced apart to fit on the board. So this board is actually designed to fit this size capacitor, <laughs> interestingly. Bam! Boost right up. And I should be able to power it up in the remote control. Yes. I can change channel. No problems at all. I don't have a cassette right now, but should I have one, I could test it. So what I'm going to do next uh, is perform a full test. So I'm going to take a take a tape and see if all the functions work properly. Uh, I was, I'm also going to check if it still loses its time and date uh, when uh, when a uh, programmed recording is finished. So that pretty much wraps it up for uh, this repair video. I'm probably going to have more repair videos coming in the future. Um, so yeah, that's it. See you next time.